never part of the plan on becoming a cruising narrowboat channel. My name's Chris, I quit my job and I bought myself a narrowboat. And the idea was to try and find work en route while travelling the entire network. The problem was we never got a blimmin' survey, so two days in we found this huge leak under the floorboards, turning this just into a complete restoration project for the last two years. Yesterday, a very rare cruise to test out our batteries to see how much power we can draw in for when we're going to be off-grid living and a great excuse to pretend that we're one of these cruising narrowboat channels you know it's something that I've really wanted to do I am sick of the DIY I can't do it I mean I just want to get cruising the batteries seem to be buggered like most things on this narrowboat the tests were negative unsuccessful a little bit like our journey home So we're on a little island here in Barford Old Mills. It's a 48 hour grass bank mooring. It's in Bedfordshire and it's on the River Great Ooze. So I'll take you for a little walk around it so you, can, so you can sort of see. There are other access points to the island, which is always a little bit disheartening. It'd be quite nice, wouldn't it, if it, the only access point to the island would be where the, the narrow boat's moored. But let's have a look. A lot of wildlife around here. So yeah, there's the other entry point up here. So this would be the starting point of the island. Is it a bit boring, all this, this island stuff? I think it's quite cool. Taking a photo of some weeds there. That's what you do, I suppose, isn't it? When you, when you uh, come over to this life. Exhausted today guys, didn't get a lot of sleep, do you know why? Knew that was going to be a problem. So a quick bit of brekkies to lie in our stomachs ready for the biggest crash of the year. I think it's got to be up there, surely. That's well good. Yeah, I think we're a little way off before we become one of these cruising narrowboat channels. So Becca wanted to take charge, reversing out the Whistling Wombat. It's quite a tricky little manoeuvre actually. Yeah, you can't go forward, there's a big, big tree on the way. Can you handle reversing her? I'm um, about to eat my words, aren't I? Easy. One of the main little rules that we do really is just take everything just really extra easy and slow, especially at these stages when we haven't done it a lot. And it, it tends to work out for the best really. And this is where we noticed the flow from the river coming from Bedfordshire was pushing the back of the boat round here. Can you see? We, we need to try and go the other way. So yeah, we already started running into a few problems here. She smashed it. Say hi to Faye and Michael here on the boat BT. They've only just got the boat before Christmas and they're documenting the whole story on their Facebook page. So please make sure you check out the link down below. The Great Barford Bridge. Now this bridge underwent significant changes in the 19th century, don't laugh, with a widening project in 1818, obviously not wide enough, that used wood being superseded in 1875 with the use of brick. Thank God for Wikipedia. This bad boy is grade one listed. I mean, this is getting terrible now, isn't it? It survived many wars, but will it survive me uh, taking over the controls? So it's a very fiddly little bridge, this, because it's sort of on an angle. I had it all lined up, it looked just about right, and all of a sudden, the river started to take the back of the boat, the stern, round with it, and the front of the boat, the bow, was heading straight for the bridge opening. Green's taken me. What's that all about?
let's run that back for you. And here you can see the back has completely gone out now. I was steering to the right, giving it a bit of extra power. Yeah, I'm not even sure if that would have helped, to be honest. It probably hindered the situation. So for some silly reason, we, we decided let's reverse out, probably because we didn't want to damage the boat anymore, and sort of reposition ourselves to, to try it again. But this caused even more problems, because the tide now is just pushing the boat, and the, the, there is no way the boat wants to swing round. So we are slowly being pushed up against this bridge, and by doing so, blocking both entrances and exits. Now I've heard stories about the tiller getting stuck and it being able to cause damage, and that was my first experience. What's that? Stuck on something. I mean, that was mad. Oh, what's happened? It's a scratch cover. So next up, we're going to try everything we can to try and push the boat off. Bex has finally decided to use her little stick. But no hope whatsoever. Thankfully, a chap in his cruiser over the other side of the river here wanted to help. We've got to try and quickly attach this on. So we're going to try and attach the rope on and then he's going to speed off and hopefully that'll help bring the front of the narrow boat round. I might leave it. So we managed to pull us round but we were still stuck at the back. Can you come forward? And the cruiser started getting taken by the river flow too. So back we went. So quickly try and untie him to let him free. to our favourite little spot. She's loving that stick now, isn't she? Show her how it's done. Absolutely nothing is, is happening here, guys. We're completely stuck and, and no one can seem to get us out. Luckily, some help from some lovely people on the side of the river. We tossed them a rope and we had it connected up to the front of the boat, the bow. So they're gonna try and pull us in now. It's coming. Yeah, we need to get to a safe area now, really, because if any boats don't see us and come charging through here, there's, there's going to be a serious accident. We are. So we are in safety. Uh, looks like we've had a bit of damage on it, doesn't it? I bucket it. Completely buggered the, the wombat up. Took out part of the wall. And the, the cratch cover's had a, a With 20. any luck, we might be able to get her to just replace that panel. Yeah. All down here. Little. And oh no, my our little navigation lights. Love those little navigation lights. So we, we're coming from here. And as we went through the one here, the back just of the the back of the boat just span round <laughs> from the current and the wind, and then there was no, yeah, no, no coming back from that. Mm. 
so many lovely people trying to help you out. It is, you know, I already had a stressful day in the last episode. Now, and we just had the episode of the biggest disasters. I think this might be the biggest one now. This is the biggest disaster. It's moments like this when I get really disheartened and put put off because I don't I don't like stress, and it's so stressful. <laughs> we'll soldier on. The rescue team's been called. So I've just had the um, rescue people give me a call and just kind of update us with what's the best course of action. She said they tend to not come out straight away because nature might do its thing and the levels might rise a bit in the river and it might just be enough to free us. Um, so she said the best thing to do is to wait until the morning and she's going to give another call then and then see what the situation is and potentially then send someone out to to pull us out basically i've buggered it i've well and truly buggered it this time this was starting to stress me out too but i mean we couldn't go anywhere this one even more so we've actually just run into a bit of luck a couple of guys up here on a on a narrow boat up the river have offered to come up at seven in the morning when they're doing their water trip and try and pull us out on the way back uh, chap's only taken the boat out a couple of times so he's he's not used to it too much either but we're going to give that a go first and if that fails i mean i don't think it's that stuck to be honest it just needs a bit of a oomph you know what i mean a bit of a bit of a shove then we'll probably have to go down the route of the uh, aa i don't think the aa will do much but the ra might do <laughs> So supposedly this property belongs to the man that owns Jordan's cereal. There she is, the blimmin' thing. Nothing but problems the wombat's caused us. <laughs> what do you think? Was it me causing the problems? <laughs> <laughs> Every day is an adventure living on a narrow boat. Isn't it, Bex? So the plan for tomorrow morning at seven o'clock is to attach a fender onto a long bit of rope Put that onto the front of the boat. When Michael comes through, we're gonna launch it at him. So obviously the rope's gonna go in the water, but it will be attached to the fender. Michael's idea, and it's a good idea because then he can sort of pull it in with some sort of contraption, hopefully. So we've been thrown a lifeline. Does anyone know how much it costs to call out the RA? We've picked the fender up. I mean, there's always something with our, with our videos, isn't it? Never some nice, peaceful sort of narrow boat journey is it always some bloody disaster <laughs> so a new day and a new task ahead of us that blooming bridge i used to really like it it's like a beautiful beautiful bridge isn't it You were completely stuck down here somewhere. Michael and Faye will be coming from up here. They will be gliding under the bridge. Yes, they will be gliding. They will be filling up at the water point just beyond here. Coming up on the left, you might just see, are some new found friends, Chris and Becca. And we're gonna hopefully help them today because yesterday they've got a bit beached. So I'll get the little bit of rope ready with the boyd on the end. Is it a boyd? That's not a boyd. What's it called? Fender. We have moved a load of ballast further forward in the boat in the hope that it'll lift the back just a little bit that we can free ourselves. So let's see how it goes. Here are our hopeful rescuers just turning their boat round. They've got a beautiful 70 foot boat. Some kayakers that want to watch and get in the way. Bloody nuisance. All right, made it look easy. Michael was using the bow thruster here. And I've got to say, he made it look so easy. Next up, we've got to launch him the Boyd. <laughs> Fender. You got bow thrusters, have you? And we are attached, so let's get going. We've got 70 foot, 22 stun, ton, pulling 60, or trying to. 
problem here is we don't want Michael to get stuck or even more so want any damage to his boat because that would be dreadful. Come on baby, come on girls, we can do it, we can do it. So again, the, the boat managed to wiggle but it was still stuck at the back. What was I saying about stress? That blimmin' stick again. Bounce it off. Hang on, is it coming? Is it coming? Is it coming? Stuck in the middle here somewhere, isn't it? I don't want you getting stuck, do you know? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So we ditched the fender pulley idea and uh, we yeah, went back to our favourite dangerous so little spot. And when it gets here, it just does not want to budge either. I mean, it's a, it's a blimmin' nightmare. Thankfully, it's about eight in the morning and there's not too many spectators about. So we're back to where we started. Gonna have to wave some people down to hopefully pull us back over again and then I think it's probably time to get a proper rescue crew down. Our first rescue crew experience, eh? Exciting, yeah. eh, Vic? Huh? We're back to where we were back at the beginning, that's how they were. Um, the back end had got stuck and we cannot seem to get it out. Um, not sure what we're going to do now. Luckily I managed to flag down a couple of lovely people that wanted to help. Yeah, we threw them the rope again and they're pulling us in, into safety. At this point, Michael had managed to come back and see us and he told us to start firing up the engine whilst he pulled. And guess what happened? The wombat wiggled free! Thank you! What a relief. Oh. And there they go. Whoop, whoop. But we do have to get back under the bridge to get home. So Becca's going to do it this time. She's going to swing the wombat round again, and then we're going to attempt to go through under the bridge properly this time. Um, I think we're we're sick of cruising at this point. We just we just want to get home now. Yeah, you can see that the bridge is on a proper angle here. Makes it very very tricky. So instead of going head on this time, we're angling in from the right, we. So hopefully if the current does come and start pulling the back of the boat round, we can still get through without too much of a prang. about two or three narrowboats go through here and each one knocked it a little bit so it seems to be a problem and a huge huge thank you to everyone involved with helping us out today we couldn't have done it without any of you we are so grateful i'll tell you what there's a reason why we call her the pride of eating soaking isn't there the lifesaver i mean i'm just useless aren't i i come through that yesterday and smashed into it then got us completely stuck bex comes along and saves the day very much a combined effort. We're calming our nerves at the minute, or at least I am. But um, we've just been talking, because yesterday when we were sort of making these attempts to move her, I, w I was on the back operating the engine and tiller and everything. And Chris was sort of pushing off and stuff. We just were not going anywhere. And this is when I started to think, God, I'm just not sure about this. I, I'm not convinced that even a boat could pull us, because it just was not moving even a millimetre. And then today, got in the weed hatch, had a bit of a look around, trying to sort of figure out what might be happening, because I think we must have just been on like a pointy rock or something, because we were literally just pivoting, but it mm. would not move. But then this is where the idea came up for sort of distributing the weight differently in the boat, so moving a load of ballast forward, which might just elevate the back just enough to free it from whatever it was stuck on. Anyhow, lo and behold, our friends on the other narrowboat came along to try pull us off. Still weren't budging at all, God. and I was like, oh. But by some miracle, people pulling the front round with the rope, it must just have dislodged something. The right angle and, and just enough motion to just 
get it over whatever it is. I'm sort of tempted to walk over there and have a look. No, I'm not. Can you see it? Horrible little bridges. So sort of reflecting on the whole thing and actually when we were over by the bridge someone said to us, you know, it could be worse because a few, well quite a few years ago someone came through that bridge, had difficulty, I think one of them was on the front of the boat and somehow managed to get their head trapped between the boat and the bridge wall and unfortunately they didn't make it and so you sort of think, oh god, you know, actually we're probably quite fortunate that it wasn't as bad as that. And there you have it, welcome to your Crowbot cruising channel. We are officially a cruising channel now. For a couple of nightmare episodes anyway. <laughs> Thanks guys, like and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next one.